that you can make foolish financial decisions because of a wedding. Go on tomorrow. And the worst aspect is that sometimes you go to a wedding ceremony and this thing that I hate so much. They have some balloons and they'll say that. But pie balloon, you know. If you don't have money, who has forced you to get married? So they have held the, the man and the woman hostage. So it's a my pie balloon. So, okay, I want people who bring 100 cities. I want people who bring 20 cities. I want people who bring 50 cities. And they have held the people hostage. It's so embarrassing. Listen, when has was at your wedding? Listen, do things within your means. If it is thousand cities you have, you must first of all have an understanding between you and the woman you are getting married to. No need for lavish wedding. Now today, I don't know what is wrong with young ladies and young guys of today. You know you don't have the means. Yet, when they want to get married, they want a bridal train of 15 people. They want a group team of 15 people. They go and rent a luxurious car, 5,000 cities. Then they go and see a caterer. 20,000 cities just for food. That they go and buy a gown that they may not wear again. A gown of 5,000 cities. They go and book a lavish and expensive five-star hotel because we need to spend honeymoon in the hotel. <laughs> Listen, if honeymoon can still be spent in your house and it will still have the same effect. So people are spending outrageously on marriage because the wedding, the wedding ceremony has put a lot of stress and strain on them. Listen, the two of you must decide which of the two you are going to spend your mar- money on? Uh, this may be a bit controversial, but you see, <laughs> what we call wedding and white wedding and all that, I, I, have a, I, have, I have a different issue about it. Because the white man will not come and do our traditional marriage. The white man will not, will not do his white wedding and then come here and then come and do our traditional marriage. But unfortunately for us, because the white man colonized us, we think that, well, we, we, have, we have taken a portion of their culture. But it looks like the Asian trauma. Uh, because the white man and the white woman, if they want to get married, oh, they just need to go to a place, one or two people, and then all of a sudden they go to the court and then they go and sign and they are married. And sometimes they can bring it to church and they bless the marriage. But African man, baby. Or person, chill, be a session, maybe, 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 maybe. Because if you say, you are sending the money, so we spend a lot in Africa just because we want to get married. And the white man we are trying to learn from is so simple, minimalistic. But for us, we want to do things to put let people know that Charlie need to a day. I get money. So there's a lot of pressure on people. Marriage is not a competition. No wedding is a competition. Hey, the most important thing is that God is there. Don't put pressure on yourself. If you want to invest in a traditional marriage, that's okay. That is if it is within your means. Invest in it and do it well. And when we come to church, let's say, we the pastors will bless their marriage for you. But and then, if you look at somebody's budget for a wedding, he, he doesn't have money. All your life savings, but for the life savings, you know, because of a so worry. People can spend as much as somebody who says poverty talk, it's not poverty talk. Hundred thousand, two hundred thousand just to get married. So we prepare for the wedding and we don't prepare for the marriage. We need a paradigm shift in the church. We need to work on this mindset where you think that your worth is determined by your, the lavishness and the extravagant nature of your wedding ceremony. If you have money, you can do it. Young man, listen, don't go for a loan because you want to get married. Young woman, don't put pressure on the guy because you want to have a bridal train of 20 people. We want a royal wedding. And sometimes we even put pressure on the honeymoon. Ah, Dubai. <laughs> so you are not surprised. You are not surprised the guy doesn't want to marry you because if you look at the if the guy looks at you, 
and the guy speaks to you and the guy picks your brain on what type of wording you want the guy is scared because he doesn't want to go ahead with it because he is looking at how much he's going he's going to push into the wedding ceremony and the fact that he may not get it back and for some of us listen sometimes oh if you want to get married sometimes you don't even need all your friends to come around I believe that it is wiser if your friend is coming for your wedding and let's say you're, you're having a wedding in Kumasi and your friend is in Accra. Listen, I better prefer that my friend will send me the transportation money than for him to, oh my God, than for him to pick a flight and come to Kumasi and I will look, I, will spend, I have to spend on his hotel bills and at the end of the day you end up spending like thousand cities. Meanwhile, the same person can send, send a thousand cities to you. Now imagine if hundred of your friends who could have come for your wedding decide all of them to send you even hundred cities. That's like ten thousand dollars. 